Today I'm going to change the filters in this uh, RO water filter. Ours is under the sink as you can see. And well that's uh, pretty much the task. Just need to get to it. So let me uh, mount this thing. It's uh, kind of a wet job. You notice I've taken everything out from underneath the sink. Uh, that's the first step. The next step is I need to unplug the electrical power and it's a really good idea to turn off the circuit breaker, uh, which I will do. But uh, okay, so those are the preliminaries and then let's go to the next step. A few details here. You notice I've got it unplugged now. I've got the circuit breaker turned off. I also keep with a magnet right here the last date that I've changed it so I can know when to change it. Uh, in our household it's about every six months. Uh, I found the wrench to take these things off. And so that's uh, the next step. Also you need to make sure that you have the uh, correct replacement. You'll notice this one says sediment. This filter can usually be cleaned although if it's not the cleanable type then you need a cartridge for that. I'll show you when I take it out. Uh, the carbon, this one's clearly labeled carbon, and this one's labeled resin. If these are not labeled on yours, I suggest getting a permanent marker and marking them. Uh, you can tell when you take these out what they are. The sediment filter just looks like a, an ordinary filter. The carbon will be very black and the resin will be kind of a lightish brown color. So again, uh, if it's not marked on yours, I would use a permanent marker and mark up here. Now I need to shut off the water and on this one the water shut off is right this little blue valve right here. So you turn it until it's 90 degrees like most shut offs, most water shut offs and that's turned off. Then you'll want to make sure the pressure's out and the pressure won't go out until this water tank down here, see if I can see it, get back in here, my clamp light is in the way this turned off. So again 90 degrees it's off. Put my clamp light back on there. There we go. Okay so I've got the water off. Definitely second check that the electricity is off, power is off. And now we can release the pressure from there. See it's gone? Okay. Now we'll go back here and the next step is to remove the canisters. I always clean them one at a time so I don't confuse them. So I'll start with the sediment and then move on. It does get wet down here. I mean when you take these things off it water is going to drip out which is why you want to make sure there's no electricity or anything in the area or nothing that's going to be damaged by water. In this case we have a tile floor down there so uh, it's not a big deal. We just uh, wipe it up with a towel when we're done. So you take your wrench and you'll see these pieces in the wrench. They fit on these nubs right here. So you just merely put it up there, put the wrench on here like that. So it's uh, this nub is sticking against this rib on the on the thing and then you open it and prepare for the water. My lighting I'm using here today is 12 volts DC so that I cannot uh, electrocute myself in theory. See the water coming out and there we have that and this is the filter. Normally it's white. You can see it's brown so it's got dirt in it so I'm going to clean that. And again I'll do these one at a time. So I'll put that back. I'll take it up to the sink and then we'll clean that. The inside of this container is a little bit brownish. It's got some residue on it. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Yeah, a little bit. A little water coming out. Um, I'm just going to wipe this with a sponge. That's the typical thing. This I've already rinsed off. That's about all you can do. You want to make sure you just get any big sand grains or whatever out of it. And you can see the inside is a little bit whiter than the outside. Uh, but uh, it's about as clean as I can get it. When the fibers start coming apart, you can see a little bit of that. When the fibers start coming apart, it's time to replace it. You don't want those fibers to go into the rest of your filter and ruin the rest of the filter. But Okay, that's that one. I'll clean up the canister, then I'll screw it back on there. 
This is a lot cleaner now, as you can see from inside there. Also, all of these will have O-rings, and the same rule applies to all of them. They'll have a slight little bit of greasy feel to them, and they should. If they're not greasy, uh, then you need to get some plumber's silicone, and you can buy that at your hardware store, and put a little thin coating of, of plumber's uh, silicone grease on the uh, O-rings all the way around. Do not pry on them with anything sharp. Don't use a knife edge or anything. What they usually recommend is something like a credit card or a plastic card like that that's not sharp. You can pry them out of there, clean them, make sure there's no sand or hair or anything on them because otherwise they'll leak. But uh, rub them lightly with uh, silicone, snap them back in place, and they're good to go. These are still good. This is a relatively new filter. It's only about, uh, this RO filter setup is only about a year old. So, Okay, so there we are with that. I'll go put it back on. Okay, I've put this back in here. Uh, make sure it sits in there nicely. It should be right in the middle. Uh, there's usually a little bump in the bottom. Can you see that? Not really. There's a little bump in the bottom that goes on the hole down here. You want to make sure that's on there, that's not off to the side, because it's off to the side. It sticks up like that. And that's not good. It'll ruin the filter when you try to force it back on there. Okay, so it's down in there. You can see that it's now sitting down inside the filter. It's below the edge. My silicone's on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this on here nicely like this. Screw it on here. Wiggle it a little bit to make sure that the filter is in the middle of the in the middle of the uh, can here. And then I'm just going to push it on, pull it on with my fingers, or turn it on with my fingers. I'm not going to use the wrench to do that. If you use the wrench, uh, it's too much. Just use your hands to tighten it. The O-rings will uh, will seat and seal if they're clean. And that's it for the first one. So let's go on to the second one. Let's do the carbon filter. Just going in order. Okay. Carbon, this is the messiest one. It's black and it's carbon. And it is usually, there we go. Now these come in different types. Uh, I use the refillable carbon filter. This came with a throwaway type carbon filter, but I don't like those for uh, ecological reasons. They're not green and plus they're a lot more expensive. So this one you take out of here. This cap unscrews and you can add new carbon. You throw the old carbon away and you save the plastic container and that's it. So this is not too dirty. Okay, let's get to that. So this is a good time to talk about the supplies you need. You need this uh, carbon. comes in a bag like this. And you also need the resin. And carbon goes in the carbon uh, tube in the carbon can. And the resin goes in the resin can. So those are the supplies. They're not very expensive. You do need them in advance. You do not want to start this process without these first. So uh, there it is. So let's go uh, empty out the old and put in the new and I'll show you that. This is the uh, carbon can. Normally there's a fine black powder in there. Not this time. I guess this is not old enough yet. But I uh, have to just clean this out again with a sponge. Usually again there's the, the black powder but this is not too bad. Check your O-rings for grease. Then we'll go to work on this thing. Here let me reposition and We'll show you that step. So here's the canister. Oftentimes one or both ends will unscrew. There is this filter, if you will, thing that keeps the carbon from falling out. And the other thing in here is this sponge. And now you can see that carbon. And the tube is full of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a plastic bag to put that in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bag and I'm just going to toss the carbon in it. The carbon is not recyclable. It's not reusable. I suppose you could burn it, but I'm not sure what would come out of it, so I don't recommend it. Uh, it depends on what has been filtering out of your water system. So I'm just going to pour it out. 
On the other end of this tube, there's another, you can't really see it because it's really, really black. There's another sponge, just like this one, but it's on this end, like that. And on a good day, I will get that sponge out of there. This one doesn't open on that end. There we go. So now you can see there was the second sponge and it's totally black. So I'm just going to rinse this. I'll put this first, uh, the second sponge back in there. And it doesn't require a lot of cleaning. The carbon is to remove poisonous stuff out of your water system. So, I mean, it'll remove some pretty heavy duty stuff like arsenic and whatever. Um, and certain types of inorganic chemicals. So, it's, uh, it's a good thing to have. I've noticed some people replace all of their filters with the same type of thing. I don't know. I would, uh, I always stick to what the uh, manufacturer originally puts in there. I don't change the filter types. And that has worked well for the past, how many years? 13 years? 14 years? Something like that. So now, turn the water off so you can hear me. So now I'm just going to put this back in there like this. And I'll poke it down in there. I've got a straw here. And I'm just going to poke it in there, seat it down in there nicely. And then I'm going to refill this chamber with carbon from the bag that I showed you earlier. And let's get to that. So here I've opened the bag. And all you do is, again, make sure you got that sponge in there first. Uh, and fill the tube. I think I may have to open a second bag. Well, maybe not. Nope. You do not want to fill it all the way up. You need room for that sponge to get in there. I may have added a little bit too much. I'm not paying attention. I'm trying to watch uh, what's on camera, but you uh, get it up there near the top. You can see it's down about an inch. Put this sponge back in there. Huh, it's about right. And with the uh, cap, just put the cap back on here like this and then it's ready to go back in you see it shows an arrow this side up it's ready to go back into the can and be the cans ready to go put back in place and here we are back again so here's the carbon I got the filter uh, the arrow up on the filter cartridge put it back in there and same process as the first one Put it up nicely into place, get it started, wiggle it around a bit to make sure that it uh, seats nicely, and it should go up there. There shouldn't be much of a crack right here. Uh, use your hand to tighten it, hand tighten it, not too much. The O-rings will do the work for you. And now for the last one, the resin. Same process in removing it. Okay, not too bad. Get my towel under there. Oh yeah, lots of uh, water. And this cartridge is also refillable. It looks just like the carbon cartridge. It's easy to get them confused. You don't really want to do that. Let's see, it's the same type of cartridge. So let's go uh, just get to it. I'll show you what that, what that looks like and how we do it, but it's very similar to the carbon process. So here we are with the resin. Just gonna empty it out, check inside there. Make sure it's relatively clean. Needs a little bit of wiping with a sponge. Uh, again, the same type of canister. Remove the bottom. This stuff, I actually like the color of it. It's rather a nice color. Looks like this beautiful brownish sand has a very strange feel to it. Uh, theoretically, you can reuse this stuff if you know the right chemical steps to go through. But I'm not going to show that. I'm not going to recommend it because if you do not get it right, well, you'll shorten the life of your RO filter system considerably and I don't know what else it would introduce. So I will just recommend throwing it away uh, and adding new back to it. 
So I'll throw it in the trash with the, with the carbon. There it is. Sponge is almost out of there. This is the top sponge. Clean it off. If you, if you live in an area where the water is really bad, really bad all the time, you cannot use regular tap water to clean these out. You'll have to use, uh, put aside several, probably several gallons, say three gallons of, of clean water. Fortunately, our system, our city water is usual, usually pretty good. Uh, we can usually drink it. It's just every once in a while we get a pipe break or something that causes a problem where we cannot trust the water so all of our drinking water is is uh, filtered just to make sure okay sponge down there in the bottom just like the carbon and then we will get the resin and put that in there the bag I have the bag open stuff is very strange. Even when it's dry, it acts wet. This was part of a bag I had left over. For the last time, I don't have enough in there, so I'm going to go open a new bag. I'll be right back. So here we are back again. I'm tamping it down. I want to make sure it's, there's no hair in there. You see it's going down quite a bit. Fill it up again. Get it up to about within an inch of the top is what I found with this system. And that's about right. Get the other sponge. Clean it off. Place it in there like that. End cap. Screw it into place, make sure it's not cross-threaded or anything. And about ready to go. Let me wipe this thing out. Just use a sponge, clean sponge, wipe it out. See it's a little bit brownish. Rinse. Okay. Good so far. Put our filter back in, see the arrow going up, pointing up, and now let's go screw that back into place. The last one is to put the carbon back on there. Again, make sure that the, the lid's sitting down, it's not sticking up above here. And just like the carbon canister, get it on there, wiggle it, make sure it's in the middle. Screw it on tightly using only your hands, not the wrench. Uh, do not forget to update your last changed ticket so that you're not uh, using very old stuff. Now what we'll do is we'll wipe this down because we want to know if there's any leaks. So you want to make sure that it's not leaking underneath wherever you've got it. We'll turn the water tap back on, same one as earlier, and turn the water tank back on as before. It should begin to fill up. And what we're going to look for are some leaks here. Don't have any leaks, don't have any leaks. Uh, you'll just let it fill up. It'll be ready to go. I can see some water traveling through here right now. So these are filling up and I will check back in about an hour to ensure that there's no leaks along here. And that's pretty much it. It's uh, ready to use. I've turned the tank back on over here. Let's show that. 
the tank is turned back on and then the water valve up here where you can barely see it right at the point of my finger is turned back on make sure that the plug is not wet in this case it's a little bit damp so I don't want to shock myself make sure that's dry plug it in So that's how you change your filters yourself. That's it for today. Hope you found it useful.